Hello, AP Bio. Uh, hope you're enjoying your break. Here's the introduction to our fermentation lab. I've kind of modified it a little bit. I've been kind of playing with it over the break to make sure that we get good data. And this is going to take a few weeks. We're going to let it ferment for a couple of weeks and do things. Anyhow, I've got my data with my carbon dioxide sensor. Obviously, if you think of fermentation, and we are mixing yeast with juice, as you'll see uh, as you download the lab stuff and the data. Um, and the yeast and the juice will do an alcohol fermentation. So if you remember, that'll give you a, uh, uh, that, that intermediate step is producing carbon dioxide. We are, and we're kind of looking at, is there a difference in juices? What's the efficiency? So we have three juices really here. We, I picked up from your friendly neighborhood cub store, a Simply Apple, a Tropicana No Pulp. Now, both of these claim to be pure, 100% juice, not from concentrate, correct? Both are pasteurized. Okay. And then I also picked up to get variety, a lemon juice. Um, just because a lot of the others in this kind of size were a mixture juices and stuff, and we want pure juices. This one is from Concentrate. Um, so we'll see if that makes a difference. What I have them is I have them in these labeled souffle cups that have a, uh, I put 20 milliliters in these labeled souffle cups um, so I can keep them separate. And then what I added to them uh, prior to get this thing going is I added a yeast suspension, which is really just you take a, a gram of yeast <clears throat> and mix it with about 10 milliliters of warm water. I put five milliliters in here and I've been letting it incubate on the bench with the lids on. And then what we're gonna do for each of them is just do a test. I'll just do one here as the demonstration because they're all the same. Um, I'll put a couple milliliters in this chamber. I'll put in the carbon dioxide sensor, similar to the oxygen sensor and stuff you've seen before. And then I'll let it sit for a minute and then I'll hit collect on my handy dandy iPad and we will um, get a graph uh, a data graph of the carbon dioxide. Uh, what am I trying to think of? What was I trying to say? Um, there's something in here. I, I, I apologize. Um, anyhow, carbon dioxide gas over time. And when I do that for all three of them, and, and I'll get the graphs on here and, and those get posted. Then we're just gonna stick these things in the cupboard. And then next week, I'm gonna take a reading and the week after that, I'm gonna take a reading. So we'll see what happens over time with each of these juices. I have also, uh, you'll see in, um, I'll put in the data table in the, in, when I, uh, for final data and stuff. I'll also be testing the glucose content initially of these juices to see if they're a different, actually I shouldn't say, I, I will, I have tested with glucose strips, the glucose con, um, um, content in these things. And I may add a little addition by checking the glucose content of these things as we go through them uh, next week and the week after. Anyhow, so that's the basic idea by the procedure. I'm gonna just start with the apple juice so you can watch it here, the Simply Apple. And really the procedure then is I'm using this handy dandy little pipe pet is to just grab two milliliters. So there's a one, there's a two, we're done with that. I'm going to cover up my juice again. And then I'm going to put my carbon dioxide sensor in there. And we're going to let it sit a minute to kind of let it equilibrate, let it settle down. Um, 
stabilize the readings a little bit. I mean, I can see them here kind of pumping up, let it stabilize a little bit. That hasn't been a full minute, but it's good enough. And then I'm just taking a reading for five minutes. And that's it. And I will just sit and watch the graph. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll rinse out the tube. I'll do the same thing for the Tropicana fine no pulp juice. And then also the lemon juice. And we'll have them all in one graph for you so you can compare them all in one graph as different trials and labeled and let you make a decision on, on stuff as we look at data. You won't be able to look at all the data, uh, right? You know, initially we're gonna keep adding to the data over a couple of weeks, but I'll keep posting data so you can start, you know, thinking about things and pondering your uh, paper and your analysis of that data and what it means for the different juices and their ability to ferment. Okay, so there we go. Thanks for tuning in from my trusty assistant, lab assistant and I. Have a good rest of the break and we will talk to you later.